So I know the screen doesn't look great, but um, I don't want to spend too much time trying to get it to be better. Hopefully it's good enough. So I want to show you two ways that you can find zeros. The first way is on your calculator. So I have used the polynomial that happens to be quadratic, so I know you have other options, but right now we're going to show this one. So it's x squared minus 19x plus 10. Here it is. You can see it graphed. I'll show you my window is really weird, so if you want to try to duplicate this on your graph, your calculator, I went from negative 5 to 5. The scale is 5 on the x's. That means it's right, 5 between each mark. My y's go from negative 100 to 100, and I step every 20, and that's our picture. So zeros, when they're real, show up as x-intercepts on our graphs. So I need to find those two points. So if you've already worked with the calc menu up here, the second on the trace button, to find minimums and maximums, it's going to be the same idea, except this time we're going to calculate zeros. So option two. And I have two to find, so two x-intercepts. So I'm going to go left to right just because I do. So I'm going to scoot over here to the left side of the one that I'm looking at and hit enter. Oh, I know that's really hard to see. Oh, how about there? And now it's prompting me to give it a right bound. And I will. And now it's prompting me for a guess. I'm going to try to get close. And it tells me, so you can see even here, it says y is 0. OK, you can't see that. But on your calculator, if you're following along, it says y is 0 and x is 0 0.54, 0 0.54. So 1, 0 is 0.54. I'll just round to hundredths. Now, if you wanted to say, hey, it's also an x-intercept, you're right. So you could write that as 0.54 comma 0. Okay. And let's go find this one. So second calc, 0. So I'm going to go over and get closer to the one we're looking for. But don't go past it, because I need to be on the left of it. OK, there's that. Keep going. And now I'm on the left. And now guess again. Okay, and that one, y is 0, yay. And x, it looks like it's 18.56. Okay. So if you have your calculator and you don't need it to be exact, you can do it this way. Absolutely. You could use the quadratic formula to come up with exact answers right, for these approximates, because you're finding solutions to the polynomial quadratic equal to 0. OK, so now let's up the ante just a little bit, and let's see if we can find all zeros algebraically if we're given 1. So if I have p of x this time, p for polynomial, 2x cubed plus 11x squared minus 27x minus 126, so the highest power tells me the most zeros I can possibly have. So I only can find 3. And I'm given x equals negative 6 is one of the zeros. So if I graph this polynomial on my calculator, I'm going to have an x-intercept here. Okay. Now, if x minus six, or if x equals negative six is a zero, then x plus six is a factor. Okay. So if x plus 6 is a factor, then I should, when I synthetically divide x plus 6 into this polynomial, I should get a 0 remainder. Okay, so let's make sure. So write down your coefficients to 11, negative 27, negative 126. And remember your process. The 2 drops down. And we multiply. And we add. And we multiply. And we add, and we multiply. Oh, yay. I knew. <laughs> so the negative 27 plus 6 is negative 21. Thank you. Positive 126 comes up. Remainder of 0. Yay. Also, what I get to know is, since I have a remainder of 0, I can rewrite my polynomial as x plus 
six, the factor that came from this guy out front, times the quotient. And remember, these are the coefficients of the quotient. Okay. So I'm looking for all of my zeros. There are three. because it's x cubed. Okay. So there's one. So there are two hiding here in this quadratic factor, which you can find any way you can that sets this equal to 0 and finds the solutions. So once you get to quadratic as a remaining factor, you can use the quadratic formula. I know because I wrote this one down, it happens to factor. So let's see, 2x, how about a 3, and a 7, and an x, and minus and plus. Okay, so my zeros, negative 6. 7 halves, negative 3. And since they are all real numbers, no i's came in there, that means they would be 3 x-intercepts. So all real, so there are 3 x-intercepts. All right.